What's up Phys Ed fam? This is Ben Landers and today I wanted to give you an update on my fastest class challenge. I made a video about this a while back but uh, since then I've kind of figured out a really organized and more kind of like programmed way to run the challenge. Um, it's a fun one-off activity but uh, I think a few things can make it really really interesting and a great part of your PE program. So these are the few things that I've done. Uh, I'm not gonna go over the whole challenge again. I'll link up the video that kind of like explains it down below, but the five second version is, you basically put a timer up on the screen. I do mine for five minutes, and then you let your kids run around the room as many times as they can in five minutes. Use a little clicker counter to uh, count how many laps they run, and then you divide that by the number of kids. So then the kids with the highest average per student, the class with the highest average per student would be the fastest class and you can do it by grade level whole school etc setups pretty basic uh, i've got four cones in the corners boom 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 and boom and then over here i've got the uh five minute timer ready to go so once kids come in i kind of explain it to them and then we uh have that stream to the uh tv on apple tv um, and then i will go and stand over here by the stereo and start the music and then as the kids run in front of me i will be counting their um, laps each time they do a lap I will hit the uh, button so this is how I uh, keep track of the scores I have a little score sheet and I do this challenge three times a year so this is what the score sheet looks like and these were up all year I've got a fall so I do it basically like right at the end of the first quarter winter at the end of the second quarter and then uh, spring at the end of the third quarter so you get to be the fastest class for about nine weeks and then we redo the challenge to find out so I just write the homeroom kids here how many students were there and then the number of laps they ran and then you do the division you just divide the uh, number of laps by the students that were present and that gives you the average last per student then the next time you run it you can uh, look back and see what their average was and even if they're not the fastest class they can still improve try to set goals and hopefully beat their last score for their own personal class and set a personal record. Now a few things I've learned, uh, I liked, so the first, time I, the first time I tried it, I just did it one time just to try it out as a fun activity. I thought it worked really well. So that's why I wanted to incorporate it three times a year as an ongoing challenge. I'm gonna give my students and a little uh, healthy competition between school, between the whole schools and all the grade levels. Uh, you can do whatever kind of incentives you want to motivate your students. Maybe the pride of being the fastest class is enough and having their name up on a board somewhere. Um, I do an activity challenge or an activity reward. So like for the last 10 minutes of class, I'll allow them to choose their favorite tag game, which is usually noodle dance tag or fire and ice, which I'll link those two down below. An another really cool idea that you can use is you can uh, get a trophy, either just like spray paint something or make one, or you can order one on Amazon, which is what I did. I'll provide links below to all the clowner counters and clickers and all that stuff if you want to get the same thing that I have. Um, but basically, I just ordered a small trophy that says the fastest class in the school, and the winner of the fastest class challenge gets to take that trophy. Here it is. And uh, they take this trophy and basically after everybody in the whole school is done with the challenge, um, they, I will like, go into their classroom with my uh, phone playing, we are the champ. We are the champions, my I'm like, dude, you guys did an awesome job. And I give them the trophy and present it to their teacher and they get to just have it in their classroom for that nine weeks. They give it back to me in the next round of the challenge. So at the end of the second quarter, third quarter, or for, at the end of the first quarter, second quarter, and third quarter, when I do the challenges. Um, and so that's how I do it. I didn't do one at the very beginning of the year just because it's so hectic trying to get all the routines and management in place. Uh, I just waited till the end of the first quarter to do the first challenge. Um, and then uh, they bring this back to me. Another thing I did was I wanted to highlight the students and allow them to um, have their picture up on the wall. So I created a fastest class poster which i'll also link up down below if you want to use that for your school and um the uh the fastest class in the school takes a picture with the trophy and then every fastest class in each grade level also gets their picture up on the wall so the fastest class in the school is like a big photo and then i have smaller photos down below i do this with first through fifth grade so that means one big photo four small photos down below let's go check out the 
poster so you can see what it looks like. So this is uh, right outside my gym door and I'm not gonna like zoom in super close on the kids' faces or anything, but basically you can uh, click the link below to get a copy of the poster and check it out. Um, but I'll just print pictures of each class as they complete the challenge and then the fastest class gets their big picture right in the middle and then the four smaller classes go on the side and I just duct tape those to the poster and then at the next challenge if they get beat their picture comes off and the new class gets their picture up on the wall this is going into the gym from the hallway so every single class in the school sees this poster as they walk into the gym and also any parents or anybody that's walking around outside in the hallway will see it out in the hall as well dude can you guys hear that annoying buzzing sound so annoying um it's like either my lights or my intercom system i'm not sure um so that's it for the fastest class challenge it's a great program fun little activity and it really does motivate students to move and um, they love the challenge of it and also it's a great way to talk about as a group as a team um you know there's some people that are going to give 100 percent effort and then other people might only give 60 percent effort and then if your class was like one half of a lap average away from being the fastest class in the school, that's an opportunity to talk about, hey, if you gave everything you got, then you can hold your head high and, and walk out of here. But if you know that you only gave 60%, then man, that stinks for the people in your class that really gave 100%. So it's a great way to talk about team, uh, teamwork, perseverance, and um, all those great uh, conversations, teachable moments, and things like that. It's also a way for you to reward um, perseverance. And uh, you know, it's not always the most talented or the most skilled classes, but it's the ones that can put the most effort in that can keep on going and not quit. So I hope that's helpful. And uh, if you want to um, check out any of the stuff I mentioned, links and all that stuff will be linked down below. One last thing is if you have double classes, one thing we found worked well uh, to count the classes separately was uh, I would hold a noodle and one counter and my co-teacher would hold a noodle and another counter and each class would just go through and um, hit their noodle and then as the kids hit the noodle I would just count um, in my other hand with the counter so that kind of kept the two classes separate so you could maybe do it that way as well hope it works for you hope that's a fun idea for you I know uh, a lot of you are already doing something similar and um, it's definitely not my original idea but that's the tweaks that I've made and the things that I've found works really well for me this year, and I hope it works well for you as well. Have an awesome day, have fun, and teach on. I'll catch you next time. You were just now trying to jog for that fastest class challenge for five minutes. Yeah. So that was pretty hard for some of you, which is why some of you had to walk, and that's fine. I said you can walk, you can jog, but when you run, when we do the pacer tests, when we do challenges like that, and it gives you a chance to see how far you can go, the most important thing that you can practice when we're doing that is practice not quitting, okay? When you run a race, that race is a chance for you to practice not quitting. That's called perseverance. Perseverance means that when things get hard, you can keep on going over and over again and you don't give up. If you learn how to do that, how to not quit, then you can apply that skill to whatever you wanna do. You wanna learn how to dance, you wanna learn how to do math problems, you wanna get better at a video game, you just keep on practicing and then you don't quit. That's called perseverance. That can help you learn anything you wanna do and achieve your passions and your dreams one day. Make sense? Yes, sir. All right, friends, when I...